powers combined, I am Captain Planet. Captain Planet, he's a hero. Gonna take pollution down to zero. Hello and welcome back in for my top five tight ends in this fantasy football season of 2023. Number one is Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews could legitimately push Travis Kelsey for the tight end one spot this year. He's done it before. He did it in 2021 when he had 107 receptions, 1,361 yards, and nine touchdowns. Uh, and then, you know, last year, obviously, dealing with injuries, Dealing uh, also with Lamar's injuries, the fact that, you know, you don't have your quarterback and you're also dealing with your own injuries. He still managed to put up 73 receptions, 847 yards, and five touchdowns. That's, you know, uh, by the way, those are career numbers for Dallas Goddard. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> in fact, those are higher than most of, uh, except for the touchdowns, those are higher than uh, Goddard's career numbers, I believe. The receptions definitely are. Anyways, Mark Andrews is a smash pick in your third round. He's an excellent value. Sorry to also diminish Dallas Goddard there, but make sure that you're drafting Mark Andrews on as many teams as possible because that onesie position, the tight end advantage, we've seen it with Travis Kelsey. It's an absolute smash to have on your team, and the fact that he's going in the third round is egregious. In fact, I'm willing to take him in the late second round in 12-team leagues. If I'm at that 212 spot, you better bet that I'm taking Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson. I'm actually going to stack them just back to back in a lot of leagues where I end up with that pick. Uh, Let our powers combine. Earth, fire, heat, water. Hard. With your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. Go Planet! Uh, number two is going to be Darren Waller, the Walrus. Um, you know, it's been a while since the Walrus has dominated the regular season, but he has been dominating uh, the New York Giants training camp. He's looked good in the preseason. He's the main target on this team. And even though his ADP, his average draft position, has uh, risen uh, probably the most out of all of the tight ends, uh, where I was formerly able to get uh, Darren Waller at a value in the 6th or 7th round, he is now easily going in the late fourth early fifth and I could see him even climbing a little bit higher than that probably the extent to where I'm willing to take him is uh, about halfway through the fourth round um, because I just I I don't see any way that obviously barring injury but like if he's on the field and healthy he's gonna have a hundred receptions for this team and just having a hundred receptions from a tight end that's gonna lead to a thousand yards however many touchdowns he happens to have He's going to have a top five tight end season if that happens. He could even push, um, you know, where he'll be competing with Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews for that number one spot. Rainforest. No one from Captain Black. No hits. <laughs> Next up on the list, number three. You know I had to get a Steeler in here with Pat Fryermuth. But I also believe that Pat Frymuth uh, actually has like the best value in terms of breakout potential. Um, he's going late seventh, early uh, eighth round um, in terms of average draft position. You're talking about offensive progression for the entire St entire Steelers squad, including Kenny Pickett, who only threw seven touchdowns last year. Pat Fryermuth is like the primary red zone target, and then it's George Pickens, and then it's everybody else. You know, unfortunately for Deontay Johnson, he's more of the PPR maverick. Um, but Pat Fryermuth uh, in the middle of the field there, and just the Steelers traditionally traditionally have always utilized their tight ends well, going back to Heath Miller and before. Um, so I really love Pat Fryermuth this year. He's actually been one of my main targets uh basically in every draft uh where i have not gotten mark andrews um i've been able to get pat fryermuth no. my heart and then if i haven't gotten pat fryermuth i've usually gotten number four on this list which is evan ingram uh, I just, you know, Evan Ingram, he's going to have spike weeks, obviously, with how many mouths there are to feed right now uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars now that you've added Calvin Ridley to that mix. And you're talking about Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, 
Zay Jones, the ultimate spot starter, and then Evan Ingram. To me, Evan Ingram is still above Zay Jones in that pecking order. And he's going to have his games where he's going to have, you know, seven to nine receptions. I think uh, the Jaguars are definitely going to be one of the higher octane offenses in terms of rate of play. So I do see a lot of opportunity for all of the pass catchers. And where Calvin really is coming off of two years removed from football, and I don't necessarily see him walking into 150 targets, I actually think that... Um, him and Evan Ingram could split targets relatively evenly behind Christian Kirk, who I actually think sneakily is going to lead this team in targets. Um, but, you know, Evan Ingram and also is just a tremendous value because he's going a little bit after Pat Frymuth in those same, you know, late, late seven to early ninth rounds uh, of your fantasy football drafts. Power is mine, bitches. And then number five. I had to talk about the rookie for the Detroit Lions, Sam Laporta. Man, there is just glowing reports coming out of Lions camp about Sam Laporta. And when you really uh, look at this team, obviously Jamison Williams is going to be suspended for six weeks. And... We've all seen the negative reports beyond that. So just because Jamison Williams comes back after six weeks to me doesn't mean that he automatically comes into like a wide receiver one or even a wide receiver two role. If there's any team and coaching staff right now in the NFL that's going to make you earn it, it really feels like it's the Detroit Lions. And Sam Laporta, by all accounts, has earned it so far. So to me, until further notice... I'm basically slotting it Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta. And then we'll see what happens from there. Uh, but when you're talking about, like, you know, there's Marvin Jones and um, Josh Reynolds and Khalif Raymond. I love all of those guys, but none of those are true wide receiver twos or, you know, true secondary targets in an NFL passing offense. And so obviously Sam Laporta has a tremendous opportunity. And I think he's going to seize on that opportunity. Again, thank you so much for following. Please go share, like, uh, comment on the videos. Make sure that you subscribe. And of course, go check out all the other top fives that I've already put out. Thank you so much again for watching and catch you all on the flip side. Until then, it ain't easy being great. Captain Flynn. Fuck it.